when you hear that still small voice that little nudge right deep inside within you please obey it it might sound silly or look silly but do obey it because you just don't know whose life or whose soul you are going to save at that moment a couple shared with me they were mentoring this young girl she just given her life to christ she was on fire for the lord she goes out witnessing she's spoken to her family about jesus her course mates in uni on the campus her neighbors she was really on zeal you know she had that fire in her bones a young girl and uh, for a while she stopped coming to church this was a girl that was always in church this husband and wife her mentors they had this strong urge one evening to get up immediately and go and visit the girl but they both were tired they just come back, got back from work you know they're professionals and they had uh, young children they said we'll go tomorrow we'll go tomorrow on our way home from work we'll pass by and find out if she's okay so they went to bed even though they said they told me that urge was really strong as if like go now but they ignored it and went to bed the next day coming back from work they passed by that girl's house they saw a crowd of people wailing crying going on they walked in asked about the girl were shown her dead body she killed herself the day before when that urge was so uh, strong in the couple to go and visit her that's when she was planning to kill herself and she carried it through so she died they found the body in the morning when the family went to her room so the couple were really distraught that if they had only just obeyed that voice they could have saved the girl so what it was is because she had been speaking out to all her friends about sexual sin telling them to give up their boyfriends it's wrong they have to wait until their marriage and then she met an ex and one thing led to the other she slept with him and she got pregnant just that one time she got pregnant so she was ashamed she felt she'd let the church down she'd let jesus down she'd let herself down and what are people going to say here is a girl who is telling us against this and she's pregnant not married so she thought the only way out of this disgrace was to kill herself which she did so when you hear that still small voice you just don't know in my situation i was down i was uh, at my lowest point i was in my flat i was just thinking about uh, you know what's the essence of this world my friend had run off with my fiance so i was devastated by the betrayal of not just my fiance but my friend how could she do this to me she's my friend i mean the man would be a man but you're my friend you, sh you should show your loyalty but they both ran off together into the sunset so i was at my lowest point while i was there in my flat feeling sorry for myself there was a handbill through my letterbox on the mats i got up picked it up it was a, an invitation for an Easter program at this church, which was just downstairs from where I lived. I opened the door. I saw this man going. I called after him. Excuse me, did you put this through my door? He said, yes. I said, can I just uh, speak to you for a few moments? I won't take your time. He came into my flat. We, I told him what I was going through. I told him I was depressed and I can't shake that gloom away. I don't know what to do. He prayed with me and uh, long story short, I met my husband through that man, through that pastor who put the leaflet through the door. I met my husband through him. So you see that day, it was a divine orchestration by God because he even said he was tired. He wanted to go home. He'll come and deliver the leaflets the next day. But he thought, no, let me just do this block. And then tomorrow I'll start from the other block. And that's how we met. You see, he met me at home. I don't know what could have happened if he'd waited the next day. But I met my husband through him. So you see, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So I was reminded of this when I read John chapter 4 about the Samaritan woman. This is the NLT version. And it says, Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. My focus is on verse 2. 
he had to go through Samaria on the way. He had to go through Samaria on the way. No pious Jew would go through Samaria. No pious Jew. They would rather go round it, I think through the lake, uh, River Jordan, a long way around it, rather than pass through Samaria. Samaria, those Samaritans, the Jews looked down on them. They were half-baked. They were mixed blood, you know, which the Jews frowned upon. They worshipped God and idols. So polytheism was going on. And their women were menstruants from the cradle. So they were very impure. They were contaminated. They were defiled people. So no pious Jew would go through Samaria, no matter how much time it sh shelves off their journey. They would rather go around the long way than pass through Samaria, Samaria because they're, they're going to be unclean. They have to go to all these uh, rituals to purify themselves. So what's the point? Why bother? So they'll go around. But the Bible says Jesus had to go through Samaria. And as we know the story, I have taught the woman of Samaritan. I will put the video at the end of this so you can watch it if you haven't. Historically, the, her name is Fotini. That name is not in the Bible, but historically she's known as Fotini. So Je Jesus had a divine arrangement with that woman. That's why he had to go through Samaria. You see? So you see, when we read the Bible... He was like, wow, why did he have to? He doesn't have to, but he did because there, there was somebody God had prepared waiting for Jesus. And so as we know, you know, Jesus was at the well. The woman came and they got talking and uh, he told her many things about, you know, where they're going to worship and about her five husbands and the man she was living with now. And she believed and he also told her there he is the messiah that you've been expecting that you've read about in the torah this is me and she, and the bible says she went into the village and everyone believed her they all came and saw jesus just from the testimony of this one woman and they all became believers jesus stayed there two more days i mean can you imagine what the other jews would have been thinking that jesus is staying in the samaritan village for two days you know, with these unclean people. He stayed there. He taught them. Many more believed in him. No more because of what the woman said, but because of what they heard Jesus say. And they became believers. So just through this one woman. And uh, the story goes historically that she also converted her sisters, her sons. She became an evangelist. Many more people. So you see, if Jesus had been um, like those the Jews of that day, if it had been all legalistic and say no i can't pass through there he would have missed that opportunity you see that harvest that was ready and ripe for the plucking he would have missed it you know because of prejudice that no i can't go through there i can't talk to that person so if you are a person somebody who maybe sometimes you go out you are giving out leaflets tracts christian tracts and stuff and you've made your plan you have made your plan today i am going to go and deliver these tracks at this street i will do this street and then next week i'll do that street but as you are going the lord is laying it on your heart to go to this street instead but you're thinking no this is my plan you see you've got your map you've got everything written out i'll do here then i'll do here but you know something is nudging you to go to this place please obey you don't know why there might be just one person that needs that tract from you on the other street where you are not planning to go you don't know maybe there's one person that's at their lowest they're planning to kill themselves that night but when you drop that tract through the door then they think okay god loves me he sent somebody to me but because you want to follow your own man-made uh, map you just dismiss that i'll do that tomorrow it doesn't matter when it's done so far it's done you know i'll go there tomorrow let me do here today you might have just killed somebody so you know try to save a soul try to save a life you just do not know because god is not going to come down himself to rescue somebody he's going to send you he will send me to that person 
So when you have that nudge, even if it's a little nudge, or it just doesn't seem to make sense, just do it. Even if you don't see anything, you know, I called that pastor that day. I told him I was low. So he would go home to his wife and say, now I know why I had to go and give that leaflet. I met this lady, Tina. This is what she told me. Let's pray for her. You, somebody may not come to the door, but you just don't know what impact it will make on that life. So do try to be a bit more sensitive to the Holy Spirit and don't just do things rigidly. This is how I want to do it and that's how it's got to be done. No, you know, we have to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So that's all I wanted to say today. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye.